<laughs> Ready when you are. Welcome to the OSRS podcast where we talk about fuck. Welcome to the OSRS podcast where we talk about RuneScape. I am Mint Mad Cow. What's going on, boys? Rakesy as always. And hi, Rice Cup. Okay, I also have a really sore throat, so I- I'm going to keep it down low. Yeah. Right. So today, boys, we have a very, very interesting guest on, Mr. No Monkey. <laughs> And I am really looking forward to this podcast because, like, I, I'm, I just, I'm just going to spill the beans. Recently, I stumbled upon your YouTube content. I started binge-watching some of your videos, and I truly found them. And I'm sorry if I'm weirding you out with all this complimentary shit, so I hope you're good at taking, you know, Oh, no, I didn't play Diego. I love it. <laughs> I was watching your videos, and I was like, wow, I, I feel like your insight into Old School RuneScape is actually very unique. And uh, I enjoyed listening to your videos. Um, so yeah, man, it's a pleasure to have you. It's good to have you, man. How are you? Hey, thanks. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm doing good. Feeling good. <laughs> I've never done a awesome. podcast before, so this should be interesting. Sorry. Well, I mean, I've watched a few of your videos now, and it seems that you like to talk a lot. So I think, honestly, you're going to be perfect on here, mate. And like, My stream yeah. tells me that, too. Yeah. I'm I think gonna... I honestly think you're going to be a great <laughs> guest. I ain't going to lie. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Now, I was apparently advised to do the sellout sub goal before we get into the Q&A, and I just thought I'd say I have something very big planned for you, and it's sitting in Rice Cup's bank. So if we get it 10,000 <laughs> subs on the podcast channel and 300 likes if we could beat the last episode just because our tile man needs to get out of Falador, 10 likes or 10, 10 likes is one step. Help us out, and let's hit 10K subs. All right, Yo, we'll Spotify, dude. Here. Spotify, right? Y'all want Spotify? Get the 10K, dude. Hey, oh, yeah, yeah. Yep. Spotify as well, man. Hell yeah. <laughs> Wait, no, Spotify Yo, and 10K. I, I mean, I'm down to throw, like, you know, 100 mil or something. I know Tebow. Oh, man. 100 mil. I know how to teach people how to fish, man, not, not, not give people fish. True, you know? true, true, true. All right, fair enough. Right, so um, with all of that out of the way, uh, I say that we get into a general Q&A with Mr. No Monkey. Can I ask a quick question to of Mr. Course. No Monkey? Of course. Uh, so could you explain to us and to the viewers, you know, what, what your specialty is on, on the content creation side, you know? Give us a quick uh, breakdown, would you? Yeah, it's changed a lot over the time. Like, I used to make guides for just general stuff. Like, I think my first video was like a Vorkath guide. But like more recently, I've been getting into like higher end PVM, like silly guides for like people with a bunch of ults and stuff. And I've done some like discussion videos lately, so I'm like trying to change my content a little bit, but that's what I'm into. So you're like uh, yep. old soup. Yeah, old soup. We'll take that. Old soup, All right. <laughs> old soup man. I know. Jeez, I say he's the, the content creator soup. Old yeah. school <laughs> guys. Just in case people aren't from the RuneScape community, gotta gotta love those, man. I, do people. <laughs> like make quest guides anymore uh after rune light added the feature that just does quests for you now music's still going strong but yeah oh, i think slayer music still making uh guides every now and then but um like the thing is there's always gonna like people are always gonna like read quest guides people like the video quest guide and i mean to be honest with you quest helper is just absolutely it you can afk quests now like you can switch your brain <laughs> off and just just click where it's highlighted it's insane but people are always Ru- gonna watch videos as well i think runescape is turning into candy crush pretty much no thought <laughs> no effort ooh click yep. ooh reward you die but, yo candy no crush loss. probably makes more money than runescape probably yeah oh my god yeah. Mate, when, when your grandma's playing a game you know that game's making a lot of money you know what i mean come on like candy oh. crush is crushing us bro in finances Straight up. South Park made is. an episode about those pay to win games. Yeah, it's it's an epidemic. Wait, really? Bro. Wait, yeah. really? Have they? Yeah. Yeah, oh, it's dude. huge. I need to watch they, it. It's great. They go into the concept that they don't try to get everyone to pay to win. Just those 1% of gamblers is where they make their biggest returns. And those people just spend like 40 to 50K crushing candy. I, I don't fucking understand the mechanics, but. Yeah, yeah. I, I've never I've never played Candy Crush, but I imagine it's probably riddled with MTX and stuff of that nature. If I had to guess, it looks like Sudoku. Could you imagine paying money to play Sudoku? It's like, oh, I can't think of this word. Pay. Okay, like, what the <laughs> fuck? Like, what is this shit, bro? What are they paying for? I, dude, I don't know, man. I will have to make a Tall Man Sudoku stream sometime or some shit. I don't fucking know, but. 
my god. Right, let's get back on track. Gnome, I'm going to ask you the generic question. Um, when mm -hmm. did you first begin playing RuneScape as a whole, like when you were younger? Oh, um, I think I was nine. Um, way back, RS2. Yeah. Uh, did the whole thing. I, I played RuneScape 3 for a long time. Like, I stuck with that game for a while. And then the same week Fossil Island came out, I switched over to old school RuneScape because I was getting really sick of uh, RuneScape 3. It had some problems. Just just yeah. one or two. Really? Just two? I heard there was like three. Yeah. Three? A three? RuneScape 3. Okay. Whole problem right there. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah. If you play RuneScape 3 out there, boys, I got love for you, man. Dude, so. you know, this is like, actually, we could link this into what we were just talking about, MTX, because, like, Gnome, if you played all the way through, like, I'm guessing pre-EOC into RuneScape 3 and so forth, mm -hmm. it's like, you probably have a really good understanding of the way that they, you know, monetize their MTX, okay? So, uh, I, I guess my question to you is, like, when you compare... Like, I, I think everybody's thinking right now, if you're not and you've not heard of Diablo Immortal, I don't know where you've been, but, like, I think everybody... Is that everybody, the one on iPad? It's, it's, uh, it's Diablo coming out on mobile by Blizzard. Ah, and it's yeah, my friends tell me about that. Yeah, okay. yeah, it recently came out, and it's been, like, it's been shamed as, like, one of the biggest, most, like, immoral games that's ever came out, because it was done by Blizzard, which were held to a certain regard, and now they've, you know, it's literally like MTX Simulator they've made, so... Can I yeah. pause you there? How Go the hell it. can you hold Blizzard to any regard, <laughs> bro? Yo, you guys know Blizzard, right? That's, well, you know, no regard it's, left. Dude, dude, this, they used the, to be. The thing no. is, right, it's like, when, it, when a game is creating sorry when a company is creating a game that people have played for like the same amount of time as we've played runescape so like 20 years or so it's like sure you know companies fuck up and make mistakes and like i got nothing you know whatever with blizzard but it's like if they've created a product that's lasted that long like that right there is like the credibility do you know what i mean and that's being tarnished so back to my my point is how bad, Gnome, would you say that the MTX got in RuneScape 3? Like, what's your opinion on the MTX over there? It got even worse after I quit, apparently. So they do these, like... It's changed from the stupid wheel thing with Squeal of Fortune to Treasure Hunter, where you open a chest with a key that you get. Yeah. Um, apparently they were doing a promotion, like... 24 like it used to be like you'd get the normal rewards and then they do like a big promotion for like a week or whatever so like you get more rewards you get more xp more gp so now they just like they run those all day every day apparently but they oh. just dump xp on people gp like it's ridiculous the oh, the worst example i could give um was there was a shark outfit that came out uh it was in like 2016 or something so if you got all five pieces off the uh, stupid wheel thing um, it would consume all of the fish that you fish, right? So you could go to Barb Fishing and just, like, full AFK. So that was the one time I bought keys. I was like, I need this thing. <laughs> oh, dude, how much did you spend Pretty to get bad. the outfit? Oh, uh, it wasn't too bad. It was, like, 20 bucks. Oh, yeah. It's not, yeah, it's not too bad. You're okay. saying, like, Endgame RS3 is going to be a game that you can just play on your phone, click on anything, <laughs> and just... That's it? You just... No bank, no, just, just fucking click on shit, and you just everything goes for you. That is uh, Candy Crush, in a way. Yeah, <laughs> it's it pretty is fucking similar. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> oh my god. Uh, right, yeah, it's so bad, dude. So yeah, you, I, you I, can get the outfit in the game now without buying anything. I, I think even if you just the, yeah, you the can get it now. You, you couldn't at the time. Ah. Look, just think about that though. Like you're playing a game that you're skilling and leveling to make money. And at the very end of that skill is you just clicking and not moving at all and doing <laughs> absolutely jack shit. That is your goal to strive to do nothing. That is the end game for that thing. That's yep. ridiculous, bro. That's crazy, dude. That's your That's MTX, bro. To do nothing. You could just do nothing. I'm doing nothing. I'm not paying money for it. I'm just not getting any barbarian assault fish, I guess. I, I don't know. That's, that's so it. weird. That's all I want. That's <laughs> fucked. That's so fucked. Dude. That's the future right there, boys. But Please I mean, no. you, you know, it's always something to bear in mind, right? Is like, at the end of the day, Jagex, 
It's a business. They focus on making money. And I feel like there are different sections in that business that, you know, some of which focus on the money side, some of which focus on the actual gameplay and so forth. And it's like, um, I've always seen it like this, right? I've always seen it like this. Games like RuneScape 3 actually allow for the company to have games like Old School RuneScape. Okay, because like when you look at old school RuneScape, it's like you look at the microtransactions we have in that game, and literally the only thing that can stretch as close to an MTX is the ability to buy bonds with in-game cash or with actual real-life money, right? So it's like, in a, in a sense, it's like, it, it's kind of like, um, it's like a scale. I see it as a scale, and on one side you got RuneScape free, and it's like a smaller player base, a lot of people spending a lot of money. And effectively being like a like Jagex's personal piggy bank. And then on the other side we got old school RuneScape, which it's like it's not making so much money, has a very dedicated player base, and you know it's a completely different business model, but that RuneScape free allows for old school RuneScape to exist, right? Because like mm. imagine mm -hmm. just for a second, if RS3 wasn't a thing and it was just old school RuneScape. I, I think that there would be... I, 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 it wouldn't be the game we're playing today. It, it just wouldn't. By, like, the standard of, like, the industry nowadays, like, it would be flooded with some sort of MTX. There would definitely be stuff in there. I, I think it would. I I like the comparison, though. It, you make it sound like there's a bunch of rich RS3 players just holding everybody else on their back. Have you ever seen that <laughs> statue or is it, he's holding the earth? That's, that's just all the RS3 players with their debit cards, dude. <laughs> Oh, that reminds dear. me of the 401k system in America. <laughs> Just a couple people holding everybody up. Um, <laughs> but honestly, do you know the, the financials, though? Because I I might even say that Old School RuneScape is holding up RS3. Um, yeah, I was going to say, I think it was last year or so, like Old School RuneScape finally pulled ahead. Like we have like, I think five times their average players or something. And yeah. it just like recently pulled ahead. I, okay. I'd imagine so, like, the we're whales keeping the lights seriously. on too. Interesting. Right? Because yeah. just... Imagine that our, our player base, just even a little bit of that dips into RS3, right? And then those people, just a little bit of them buy MTX, right? So it's like we're constantly feed dripping them, our rusty casual players. They can't play for shit on old school, right? And they're, we're just feeding them into our ecosystem. It doesn't really work the other way too well because a lot of people who didn't play RuneScape 3, they just kind of quit. You know, they came back yeah. old school. Some of those RS3 players are coming. A lot of them are still in the notion that they don't want to rebuild their account. Which, <laughs> that's the best part. That's why you I was one of them. RuneScape, dude. <laughs> they just want to yeah. sit there, a barbarian fishing, clicking on a on a <laughs> pawn, bro. That's their goal. I don't. Hey, I don't want to grind back up to this status. I already got it right here. I just click. I'm good. I'm set. So that's my to, game. to go back real quick, you just said um, about the report of old school RuneScape finally pulling through over RuneScape free. So are we talking like overall profits? Or are we talking like numbers in terms profits. of members? Really? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. That's it's kind of it's not su super awesome. surprising though. I mean, it's Runes old school RuneScape's a force. We're a force when it comes to viewership, to even the J mods. They're they're decent, right? They're doing pretty good. Uh, overall content creators, Twitch, YouTube, force overall in general, man. Even our advertisements are hitting harder on. I guess they're still running them on Facebook. It's like you said, though. All we have is bonds, right? They they don't only have those keys you can buy. You can also buy these these rune coins. They're called to like buy cosmetics. There's like hundreds of cosmetics um, in the Solomon store. It's just like you can buy everything with real money. Like, <laughs> oh my god, yeah. I I don't know. I feel like that's you know on the conversation of MTX. Like my view on it is. I, I know the landscape for gaming overall has like changed a lot and it's like a, you know every game needs to make money and so forth but like the way I see it is that I don't have a problem with MTX to a certain point right so if it's MTX which is purely um oh sorry what's the, what's the word when it like doesn't affect cosmetic, cosmetic yeah cosmetic. if it's if it's cosmetic I, I don't have a problem with it okay like I just don't. I, I really don't have a problem with that whatsoever, okay? My issue, there's two kinds of MTX that I personally dislike, is when one of them significantly improves and gives you an advantage in-game over other players, right? Which you could argue, you know, you can literally pay for XP on RuneScape free. And the other thing that I dislike 
is the the kind of a loot crate system which will reward you with something in game which is then deemed as being more valuable than what you would have paid to get it e.g it's gambling okay those two types i'm not a fan of but when it comes to um you know you're just paying to have like a, an outfit that gives you no benefit whatsoever i'm like yeah whatever mm-hmm. like that is what it is i'm not too fussed about that personally I think even the cosmetics are a problem when they're too extreme, though. If you've ever seen RuneScape 3, like, you're not going to be able to tell at a glance if a player's wearing endgame gear or not. They'll have some flashy, like, trail behind them. Like, in this game, if you see someone in endgame gear, they got the Torvalon, they got the Scythe, you know for sure they're, like, loaded, right? In that game, if you don't know what the endgame gear is, like, you're not going to be able to tell. (laughs) Yeah. It could be a level 3. Yeah, no, that's a fair point. Yeah, I I watch people play RuneScape 3... I don't, I don't know what the fuck. I mean, I, I can see what they're doing. I don't know what they're wearing. I honestly, I have arrows. <laughs> yeah. Could be rune. Could be <clears throat> trimmed no armor. <laughs> I, I have to ask. I'm like, hey, what gear you got? And then usually it's some fucking name I don't know, but it'll be added to old school RuneScape in two years, and I'll learn. So it's fine. Yeah. But I don't know, man. I agree. Cosmetics can be a problem, but when it comes to uh, pay to win, I do think that the way forward, and I, old school RuneScape could do this, is cosmetics. But with um, the creative market, right, kind of like how YouTube has free creative market, right? We're content mm-hmm. creators. We just go out and we make content and then YouTube gets uh, a cut and then that goes into Google. So I feel like the ecosystem in RuneScape, if we o- open that up with cosmetics, we, we take all these people who make great RuneScape art already on Reddit. They're even uh, having some of their items on their shops. Why not have these people come in? And we could vote on like maybe weekly cosmetics that come in the game, and those could cost in real money. And then you could split it. And then all of a sudden, you got yourself a brand new market. And it's, not, I mean, you know, pay to win. It could be too extreme, though. I don't know over time yeah. how many cosmetic items could come in the game. Could be, a yeah. Problem. I, I think if it was the difference between old school RuneScape continuing versus like coming to an end because it wasn't making the money. I'd be open to it. I'd like to just just add on to what I said about my non-issue with people buying outfits. I much prefer the way it is. Like, you're 100% right. Like, I feel like yeah. video games like RuneScape, <laughs> it's like, you should be able to run through this open world with other online players and be able to identify, like, how good a certain player is by their achievements, e.g. their gear, versus the RuneScape free model of, like, you know, you've got Megatron running along the street with wings and stuff, like, <laughs> you know? Like, I, I'm totally, you know, that's, that's oh, it. I'd buy that. <laughs> that sounds good. Can you imagine rolling up in the wild? <laughs> no, it's Megatron, no. bro? Ooh, bro yeah. it, it, I mean, it, you can still see their gear if you click on their name, but they should yeah, have an option so. for me to just turn off cosmetics. That'd be great. Yeah, and, yeah. and also, the whole MTS talk, like, um yeah rc definitely has way more mtx but i th- i think i think we're over dramatizing it a bit because i feel like most other games are still way crazier mtx wise than rs3 yep. like i don't like rs3 mtx i don't like mtx in general right but but at least an rs3 you could play iron man mode and then that pretty much yeah uh, takes away all the xp stuff i mean the cosmetics are still there but yeah you don't you know that's completely not Sorts the game, you know, experience improving it or whatever. Yeah. But but yeah, yeah. Not a fan of MTX, but there's some things they could do. I think R three is is not incredibly bad compared to other games. But honestly, oh, no. when I think of other games doing MTX like R S three, it kind of sounds like a deaf cry, you know? Dude, it sounds I mean, like the failing screams of a company and they're just trying to cling on. Bro, I think something that is incredibly (laughs) important to remember here is, I I know there's going to be people that hear this and it might be the first time and they're like, what the fuck is he on about? But like, I would say that RuneScape 3 isn't even a bad fucking game. Like, it's literally not a bad game. It's just there are like unfair advantage through the MTX system that get put it in like a terrible light. But like the actual game itself, I cannot tell you how many people that I've heard who play the game all the time and they're like, man... The game's actually really good. The developers are pouring their heart and soul into this. But, you know, it's all being, you know, whatever other side of the business there is at Jagex, it's being flooded with microtransactions, right? Which obviously diminishes, like, the good of it. But I'm sure Gnome could tell us, because you're obviously someone that's played it to end game. Like, is RuneScape 3 an actual good game, would you say? Like, how do you feel about it? 
I was going to say, I think the PVM in the game is honestly better than the PVM in old school. Like, they Ooh. have <laughs> Let's so hear many this. good bosses. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, the thing, the thing that's cool about RuneScape 3 <laughs> is I call it, like, my crazy uncle, right? So, like, old school RuneScape, they have the polling system. Everything's controlled. They're very careful about putting in content that's, like, good. It's not going to hurt the game. RuneScape 3, they put in whatever they want, right? Mm -hmm. Which is causes some major problems right but it's also really cool it allows some like really really cool ideas to come through just because they're not held back like at all yeah so they've got Would some you say they're, they're not cool held back or they're just pushing out updates because they're like please god play this game please hear something new uh, right is that is that it or is that not the energy they're going no i think at? i think they put some genuine effort into their bosses they're very very cool like <clears throat> the mechanics are awesome like it's not like a desperate Thing, I don't think. No. So, but when you're talking about their updates, it's like they don't combine well with the others. Like it's so many that it's they're good, but they inter interflict with old updates or what? Well, I'm just talking like microtransactions and stuff. Oh, right? okay. They just put All in right. put in whatever they want, right? Because I don't know, um, I don't pay attention to RS3 updates. I think the newest one I saw was these things that look like Dagonoff Rexes. Amen. Yes, the matriarchs. Yes. Yeah, that's the last thing I saw. So I'm not Min, sure what. Min, when was the last time you paid attention to old school RuneScape updates, buddy? Hey, you want me to tell you about this sniffing update? <laughs> yeah. Let me tell you yeah, about this sure. sniffing update, dude. All right. Let's hear it. You train smithing, and you can get a uh -huh. sword that apparently is pretty good. I heard it's pretty good. Yeah. Okay. All right, yeah. man. How much check? How much XP an hour is it? Do you know? I don't even know how much XP an hour a whip is, dude. What the fuck kind of question is that? <laughs> you think I'd look at XP per hour, boy. Fair enough. Uh, right. Well, listen, on the on the subject of um, RuneScape 3, and we're talking about the PVM system over there, um, you know, it's interesting because I actually know from your videos that you've spoken about this, but uh, I'd like you to talk about, if possible, at some point you were talking about a boss in RuneScape 3 where the loot that you get from it multiplies depending on how many times you've killed the boss and the difficulty increases, right? Like, can you mm -hmm. explain that concept? Because I thought that was really fascinating. I never squander a chance to talk about Telos. I think he's my favorite piece of content, RuneScape 3. But okay. they released God Wars Dungeon 2, basically. So that had like four bosses for different gods. And then a month after that, they added Telos in the center. So it's like next, you have to kill all the, all the bosses. You get a key, and you can go enter and kill him. Um, what's cool about... I won't talk about like the mechanics with the fight, right? But quick synopsis with the rewards is he's a solo boss. Um, you kill him. When you kill him, it puts loot in a chest. And you have two options. You can either claim the loot immediately. You get to see exactly what it is. Or you can continue on and do the next kill, leave the loot in the chest. So what it does is it rolls to make him harder. I think it's 15 to 20% harder, something like that. And then it's called Enrage. Basically, he has percentage, like how much harder he is. And then it increases the multiplier based on how much loot you have in the chest. So for oh, every kill you do, real quick, in does, addition to that... Yeah. Does that increase his damage, or is it just his HP when he gets enraged? It's everything. It's damage. He gets even an additional phase at some point. I think it's at 100% enrage. But, like, yeah, all the mechanics become harder. Yeah. So he scales up to 4,000% in rage. And to uh, put that into perspective, it took, I think, 13 and a half months for anybody to ever do that. So it gets very, very hard. <laughs> How much yeah. loot are you looking at when you get to that point anyways? It must be a car or something. <laughs> it is absurd, yeah. <laughs> so the maximum, the maximum amount the chest can hold is 200 kills worth. So the really, really, really good players will do something called a 200 kill streak, where they try to leave all of their loot in the chest for up to 200 kills. And when I made the last video, I think it was 85 players had ever managed to do that up until today. And Telos came out years ago. So it's oh. insanely hard. But Evil Lucario, who is basically RuneScape 3's Wooks, yeah. did a video where he... He did uh, 200 kill streaks for a month, and he reviewed like how much money it is, and he failed like I think he tried to do eight and he failed twice, and he still ended up making. He calculated it all out. It was 250 mil GP an hour in that game. So, and you're like, oh, it's RuneScape three fun bucks. That's nothing, right? 
But if you convert it over to this game, that was 50 mil GP an hour. Like, like That's actually nuts. absurd. That's yeah. nuts, man. All right. Dude, dude. dude. How, right. I remember hearing it, but I can't remember. How much was it mm -hmm. per hour in supplies that were used for that boss? 50. 50 mil. Uh, no, the supplies that were used to kill the boss. Yeah, 50 mil GP an hour oh. is the supply cost. It's absurd. What the? Wait, are we talking 50 mil old score or we're going to get free? In that game. So the equivalent okay. would have been... 10, right? Yeah. 10 mil old They're score. They're paying 10 game. mil GP an hour to make 50. Yeah. Dude, that's nuts. Yeah. And, and, and the whole time you've got the chance of like... If I'm following this correctly, the whole time you've got the chance of dying and like losing out on all of that loot. Is that right? Yeah. So there's a 25%... When you die... 25% of that loot is just randomly removed. And you can see everything that's in there. So you get a rare drop. Let's say you get a scythe, just as an example, right? Scythe goes in the chest. Now you've got a choice. Do I keep going? Because now there's a 25% chance if I die, that thing's gone. So super, super high risk. Dude, that sounds that sounds awesome, man. That sounds I'm not really, a, really cool. Please. Yeah, I'm not a <laughs> PVMer, but if I was one for old school, I'd be petitioning to get this into the game. Or old school RuneScape. I mean, a hundred. It doesn't have to be Telos they add, but I'd love like this mechanic to be put in. It's yeah, so this cool mechanic on any boss, dude. But if you die, your account gets deleted. <laughs> dude, man, the thing is, like, they could literally like apply that to bosses we already have. Like, just take like Zora for example, right? It's like they could mm -hmm. effectively do that same mechanic and system with Zora, where it gets slightly enraged, becomes harder to kill each time. But then you get like an increased loot after every so many percent in kills. Like, it's a very interesting way of um, having a boss come into the game, and it's something that old school RuneScape, quite frankly, has never had. But like that does sound like very futuristic thinking. I like that a lot. It's cool. And, and everything yeah. that is cool in RuneScape three, they seem to have added only a smithing mini game. In old school, that's kind of <laughs> that's great because this is this. Is, I would maybe get in the PVM if I could like challenge Zora to like God mode, you know. But you you can't, so I don't. Because why? You'd be surprised how much old school takes from RuneScape Three. It's I'd say like eighty percent of the content is at least inspired. Like I would raids say are original. I am but... not surprised. Eighty percent, a lot. Hundred percent. Still not surprised. I see that for sure. <laughs> I, honestly i'd be surprised to see what update didn't come from rs3 that would that would surprise me what actual original content came is a bulwark original is that does anyone know is that yeah i think bulwark's the original yeah fuck dude really that shit out of all every original idea we got the bulwark <laughs> we got the bulwark <laughs> dude, are you that's such a kick in the ass bro are you kidding me that came in the game <laughs> oh my god dude no wonder they don't put original ideas into the game you look dude. what fucking happens bro they're hard to make man they're hard no. so oh. mr mr gnome something that you said in one of your videos that like really stood out to me was um you were talking about the last piece of original pvm content that we've had in old school runescape right so basically you know there is no counterpart to it on runescape 3 and um you know something you said was i, I believe the last uh pvm update we had that was original content was the fasani's nightmare and then you said but it could be argued that that is effectively this boss in runescape 3 so um like how how long has it been then? In, in that case, like since there has been, what was the last piece of original old school RuneScape content that came out that had nothing to do with RuneScape Free? Not even the last Maybe. piece. Let's just name a piece. Anyone? <laughs> well, I mean, there's raids like raids Inferno and so forth, like yeah, that stuff. Dungeoneering, you know? right? It wasn't like it was like it was inspired. Definitely original. I'll give it that. But it was incredibly inspired by dungeoneering i was gonna say in my video i forgot to mention gauntlet which i think is probably the last like true original but even then like that boss is there's hanyef in god wars dungeon too like it's very very different but it's still like you know <laughs> still came from runescape 3 kind of i swear to god that was inspired by something rs3 as well like that and i don't, I don't know I'm not i mean gauntlet god. is straight up dungeoneering like it's almost yeah, the exact as well that's what Double dungeoneering. Yeah, it's exactly like mm -hmm. that. You get uh, it's like that one dungeoneering floor from Wish. <laughs> yeah, from Wish, yeah. <laughs> from, <laughs> from Wish. Oh my god. But like, uh, yeah. it, you know, it raises an interesting question, I think, because like, I don't necessarily think that it's a bad thing 
for Jagex to take, you know, inspiration from their other game. Um, especially looking at the content we've had in Old School, which I would argue is actually, like, turned out pretty goddamn well. But it's like, where's the point that you draw the line, right? Because... We're talking years. Like, if you're going to say that for Sony's Nightmare is effectively something in RuneScape 3 already, and that's just been taken from that, like, the entire idea, it, it's like, it leads me to question, is the old-school RuneScape team out of fresh ideas, or is it that they're scared to come up with any new ideas because maybe they're worried that it's not going to come into the game anyways, you know? It, it's like, it, it raises a lot of questions, you know, why that's the case. Because that, that's kind of like the backbone of the problem is what what's happening with these ideas? Are they just not being made? I would almost say that they are, right? Because of the game jam, and I don't want to go into the wilderness again, but the wilderness extension and whatever else was mentioned in the game jam seemed to be incredibly popular with almost everybody who played RuneScape, and none of those ideas were from RS3. Yeah, right. but the key yeah. difference is the game well. jam is specifically like it's literally Jagex being like, "Hey kids, you've got a week to go and have fun and do whatever you want. Come up with crazy ideas," but they're they might not come into the game. But don't think about that. Like that's that's what game jam <laughs> is, right? That's literally what it that. is. That is literally no, what no. it is. You're 100 percent right. So I'm saying like. Is that the backbone? Is that the ideas are there and the people in the game want them, but they're just not being passed? And are these like executives or whatever passing these ideas? I'm imagining there's some overlord that just sits there and takes requests, right? Yes, there will be purple trees now. No, fuck that. I don't know, man. I don't know what he's doing. (laughs) But does he only say yes to RS3 ideas? Is that it? It's like, oh, this was kind of successful. Okay, try this. Okay, I like that. Oh, you wilderness extension? No one fucking fucked that, you know? <laughs> what is he thinking up there, dude? Who is this overlord? And is that why we're just not getting original ideas? I like to think so. Dude, I think well, it's more... Yeah. Gnome, you go for it, man. Spill okay. the beans, let's hear it, man. <laughs> I was gonna say, to be fair, like, RuneScape 3 has just been around a lot longer, so... Like, there's just going to be overlap regardless. Like, if you make a mechanic... This game's pretty simple, right? So, like, eventually you're going to steal something on accident. It's just going to happen. That's not a bad thing. No. But, yeah. Like, you can't really talk about this without talking about Next, right? It was literally, like, a copy-paste job. Like, almost the exact same. <laughs> I mean, you got Torva in the game. I'm pretty sure that existed. Uh, it's different. It's, sure. it's mixed up a little bit. Not the exact well, same as it was, it doesn't have the right? HP buff, right? But if they put yeah. the HP buff in, that would have been... I would have been terrified. What, what I was hoping for, um, like years before they even mentioned they would do next, is I was hoping next would show up in raids three because it's a desert raid, and I was down to see because she's Zeros is general, right? Makes perfect sense. You got desert, desert treasure, yada yada, got all ties in. Wouldn't that be sweet if next showed up as like a boss in the raid instead of just like a copy paste? I don't know. I feel like there's so much more they could have done with it instead of just like. Are you talking like lore wise to make it cooler instead of like lore? It fits. It could have been a completely for. different fight to fit as like a raid boss. Like it didn't. I don't know. If it, it did feel like next was that kind of hey, please play this game and not New World thing. <laughs> and now that New World doesn't exist, we're not seeing really anything happen now. Maybe New World needs to come back up, and we'll start getting more updates. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no, I've seen it. Filler. New Boy. World is now pretty much dead. Where are the RuneScape updates? Think about it. Am I wait, wrong? So, wait, I'm confused. Like how that has any correlation to old school Dude, RuneScape? I'm so confused. Old school RuneScape was updating next. And right. All these updates. New World was taking its viewership back then, bro, and then they flopped. So now that they're dead. We don't see anything right now. We're seeing some rumors of, of Raids 3, but they're not rushing it out. They're, they're not dumping it on us. They're taking their time. Maybe that's I mean, why. Maybe they're not feeling rushed. Maybe they're just like, oh, dude, we got the lead. Amazon <laughs> flumped it. Whatever the fuck's oh, going on th- over there. We're good. Oh, you think they're chilling because their competitor's they're dead. I got they're, you. Okay. What do we got? We got Diablo Candy Crush. That's not competition, bro. Blizzard, <laughs> their staff, like well, Jesus Christ, not competition. Amazon Jeff Bezos. Who knows what the fuck that man's doing, but it's not New World. Definitely not New World. Where is the competition for RuneScape, bro? We are just chilling right now. Maybe mm-hmm. that's the problem. Maybe we need a little little fire under our ass, dude. Maybe. No, I don't mind it, dude. I, I'm still I'm still trying to get next done, though. Well, ain't so. no one doing 4,000 hours at every new boss rice, all right? I know. 
<laughs> I mean, right? No, no. I mean, we need to chill, dude. They freaking released group Iron Man leagues and next like all the same yeah. time. That was, that was messed up. They're doing, yeah, they're doing yeah. a lot, a lot of stuff. And also, I will, I will, I will, I will add. Sure, they are late with you know releasing raids free, but honestly, man, I'd rather wait and get it right. You know, and, and I feel like yeah. they've they've done a very good job of that in the past with like TOB and obviously Chambers, um, which leads us on to the next point. Raids free is right now predicted to come out in August, I believe. Okay, so we're we're you know just around the corner from that. Um, there's a there's a desert raid in raid, uh, Runescape free. Is that right? Yeah, kind right? of. It's in a different kind of? dimension, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, because I remember uh, like people always go there, and it's like the hub for players to go as like a bank or something, or at least at one. Oh, you're point. thinking of Menafoss. Yeah, yes, that's, not... that's it. That's what I'm thinking of. I was thinking it's of that place boss, too. But... Dude, I remember seeing a little trailer for it. They got the little pharaohs and a little river that runs by. Yeah, yeah. I saw it, I saw it for like one minute. <laughs> I'm dude. surprised we're not getting that with a uh, with the raids three release. It's a little weird. I figured we'd get yeah. into Menafoss. Yeah. Right, they just got that pyramid and that weird horse cat yeah. thing that stands outside, and that's it. No one wants to go there. So, honestly, if they kind of spruced it up, maybe put a little wilderness outside, and I'd be down. <laughs> a little wilderness, yeah. <laughs> just like a little two by two square, dude, where you can just have it out with somebody. That'd be great. That would be awesome. Well, yeah. <laughs> it would be. But before we get like deeply into RS three, you were talking about how they grouped up these big updates right after another, and Rice is like, dude, I can't separate my time this much, you know. In New World, boys, I'm sorry to say, was going on back then. And now, this whole year in 2022, no updates, no no spread. I'm just feeling like I might have caught something here, boys. I think I caught it, dude. <laughs> I think they were trying to yeah. take down New World. They just spammed those updates, and now we got nothing. Dude, I, I don't, yeah. man, Risk I don't think... caused New World's downfall. Yeah, I, don't, I, think, <laughs> I think New World did that on their own. I ain't gonna lie, bro. I'm <laughs> a no, beast. But that's why it's an inside job. <laughs> well, why, why else would they just dump all those updates, these huge updates, in like the span of two months, you know? What, what were they rushing for? What, what were yeah, the updates, firstly? Show. Like, take me back to this time. Like, what, what were uh, the updates? What group happens? Iron Man um, next, right? And then wasn't it leaks? Was, wasn't leaks also happening as well? Oh, within three months, you're saying? All, all last year, bro. Right? All last year. Okay, okay. And they were close. They were, like, within, like, months span oh, of each other. Rice guessing. was, we were having on the podcast, Rice was like, dude, what are they doing with this timing? You know, this timing is, is yeah, just crazy. Bad. It's horrible. I mean, I, I, I don't know. Maybe, you know, maybe there was like a statistic where Jagex were like, oh, New World's come out and our player numbers are dipping or something like that. But honestly, I'd be, I would be really surprised if they were concerned with a new game launching. You know, maybe not it, concerned, but like it is weird that they just dump this content and then leave 2022 first half blank. That is like you would think scheduling wise that wouldn't happen right unless there was a reason they had to rush that content out i don't know i'd love to have a jmod on we could pick their brain feel free to come on but uh by the way boys daily or daily podcast reminder mint mad cow will never receive that t-shirt with his name on it bro <laughs> i feel fucking so annoyed at that Do you know what i sorry no real quick you don't know this but basically <laughs> My boy Mint's I mean, been old school Runescape content creator for like 10 years now. This man's been pumping out mm. millions of videos, millions of views, and they've never even sent him a t-shirt with his goddamn name on it. This man is like the black sheep of the community. And like, I don't know, man, I think they've done you dirty. I'm not gonna lie, like, I genuinely think about it. I'm like, man, we need to like start a fucking petition. Like, you need Frenchy. that shirt, man. Your anger... It brings me solace all right just let you know it filled that void in my heart man now i won't need a t-shirt because i know you're there you're <laughs> angry just like me man I, I bro appreciate you, know, you know you know what i will say like gnome um i would say that you're a very quick up-and-coming youtuber for old school runescape right now bro i'm not even gonna lie your video was impossible for me to escape it was like in, in my recommended and on my homepage for like three fucking days. And I was like, I really don't care. I was like, I really don't need to watch this right now. And then I was just like, man, if I click it, it's going to go away. So I clicked it and I was like, oh shit, it was really good, man. And I was like, I binged the, like, the rest of your videos. I was like, oh, I'm an idiot. But um, 
Yeah, bro. Like, you're definitely an up-and-coming YouTuber. Like, so... Sorry, I'm on a tangent right now, but, like, I've been watching your streams. I'm slowly becoming a fan of yours. Gonna pick up some merch and all that stuff. Drop the tier three. Um, you do a lot oh, of... Oh, yeah, bro? That's... <laughs> hey, dude, where's my tier three over here, right? See, I'll be wait. <laughs> you do a lot of Inferno speedruns, which, um, is actually something that I find really fascinating. It's something I'd like to do. I just realized I need to do the combat achievements for the double task when I get it. Um, which leads me on to my next point, which is uh, end game in old school RuneScape. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how important do you think that end game PVM is for the game overall? Hmm. I mean, I can't put like a percentage on it. Very important. <laughs> very, okay. very important. Do you think that um, it has? Do you think like it has an effect on? Um, you know, like, the rest of the game and, like, the stages of getting there. Because, obviously, like, it, it's kind of, like, a lot of people are probably, like, mid, you know, sort of, like, mid-game. Yeah. Like, DKs, maybe going on to do some chambers because it's safe. And, and like, you could argue that end-game content, like, speedrunning Inferno and doing things of that nature, and, like, uh, Telos, the boss that we were talking about earlier, those mechanics are very catered towards, let's say, like, 5% of the player base. So... With that in mind, you still think that it's a very important aspect in order to keep the game healthy and the growth of the game. I I said that in that last video, and I I think I didn't make my point maybe the best I could have. But I, I want it there there's the terms like skill cap and skill floor, right? So skill cap is like as hard as the PVM can get. That's like where your skill cap's out at, right? Skill floor is like how accessible it is, right? So, like, I would say Chambers has a lower skill floor than Tob. It's a lot easier to get into, right? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. with Raids 3 coming up, this is their, their chance to have the whole spectrum covered, right? It's supposed to be easier than Chambers to get into, and it's supposed to scale up as hard as you want it to be. So, my concern is they're going to leave us hanging again. They're adding the system with invocations to Raids 3, right? There are these difficulty multipliers, so you can throw on, I don't know, your prayer yeah, drain faster, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's supposed to be easy if you don't have any of those on, and it's as hard as you want. You can throw on as many as you want. My fear is that there's going to be a point where throwing on an invocation, even if you deal with it perfectly, if you do the raid perfectly, it's going to decrease your GP an hour just because it makes it slower. That's my concern, and I could easily see it happening. <clears throat> I... Ideal in my brain, perfect world, any invocation you add is giving you more GP an hour. If you can handle it and add it, it should be giving you more money. That's ideal. Because if that doesn't happen, what's going to happen is we're going to have some set of invocations that people like that's meta, and we're just going to run that. And it's going to be kind of boring. Mm -hmm. And I don't want Raids 3 to be boring, man. <laughs> I don't want yeah, it. You know, you know, the sad part is it wouldn't be an issue if everybody weren't so smart now. <laughs> Because <laughs> yeah. now they're always going to figure out the optimal handicaps to have to get the it's, best GP per hour. And they'll probably figure it out within a month just because everyone in their spreadsheet, you know, lifestyle's got it, got it covered now, nowadays. They're just so good at it. Is this you pretty know? much high risk, high reward PVM is what you guys are talking about? I wouldn't even say there's a risk. Not it's risk. more like just a challenge. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. See, I would yeah. like it. To where you were talking about your whole loot gets deleted if you kill a boss, they get the rage mode. Yeah, I don't that... know. I don't know if Raids 3 is the best place to add it. I could see an invocation doing something like that, like increasing your death cost or something like that. But <clears throat> I would just like to see that in general be added to old school overall. Like there should always yeah. be that little mark you could do, like a challenge on anything that's PVM related to take it to the next level. Cause isn't isn't it there like a little empty feeling for all those PVMers out there? There's no risk. <laughs> You're just constantly making bank. That's I mean, why I love Inferno so much. Cause when you get to Zuck, you're risking like you know an hour before, right? The heart yeah. rate goes up. Uh, you're sweating. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> it's the challenge. It's all it's all about the challenge. Like that's the difference between PVM and PVP. It's like the challenge aspect is what makes pvm the thing that's like the the rush the chase the thing that you go for you know my, and, my favorite thing yeah sorry go ahead no you go you go man let's hear it my, my favorite thing with pvm is whenever i'm learning something new so if i'm going oh let's throw in this piece of gear i haven't used this or like i for inferno speedruns for example i i wasn't using scythe before 
And then Atacon pushed me to start using Scythe. And I'm like, okay, we got a new learning curve. Here we go. I'm probably going to be a bit slower for a bit, but I'm going to gradually get better with this. And mastering that is like, I can't even describe. <laughs> it's so satisfying, man. Learning a new tech or anything like that is just the best. Yeah, that's fair enough. So to go back to raids free, like, mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm, I'm going to get my point out, but I've got a little bit of a spill here. So yeah. I, I'm just going to say this firstly, listening to your video, um, you know, hearing about the last piece of original PVM content that came out, it made me feel one of two ways. Part of me felt like, okay, that's fine because, you know, the content that's come out has been good and I've enjoyed doing it. Uh, I really enjoyed doing the hard mode for Sony, uh, Inferno, so forth, all of that stuff. Even if there is some inspiration taken from RuneScape 3, the content has been good nonetheless. But there was also a part of me learning that it's been such a long time since there has been any new content coming out that is original to old school RuneScape without inspiration or, you know, something which isn't blatantly copied and maybe just ordered slightly from RuneScape 3 that left me feeling um, a little disappointed, okay? Like, it left me feeling like, um, like, it, there's nothing wrong with that because obviously if the content is good, that's fine. But it made me a little bit concerned in, in the sense of, like, the... I don't know if I want to say authenticity... But it definitely like the originality of the content, which now leads me on to Raids Free. So, mm -hmm. with Raids Free, how important do you think that the rewards are from Raids Free? Because you've covered it a lot. Uh, they've gone back and forth with the staff, which is effectively the on par with Twisted Bow and Scythe. Uh, and it seems like they're also throwing a lot at the rewards from Raids Free. So, in your opinion, what's your take on the rewards that should be coming from that? I think the rewards that they have it designed now are great. I had a I had a major problem with the Hekka as it was designed originally because I felt it was too weak. They're like, oh, this is going to be on par with the Scythe and the Tebow. And I'm like, it's a 4% DPS upgrade over Harm Staff. Like, where you use that? And where do you use a Harm Staff? Like, not many places. So... With the with the rework with the shadow, like you're actually using it at new places, it's like fifteen bosses roughly that it's like beating Tebow or Scythe, which is great. Like it, it actually fits in and it's good. It's got some use. Um the other rewards are great too. Like everything has a purpose. That new ring that doubles your spec regen is awesome. A story is super powerful, <clears throat> ward's super powerful that boosts your magic damage. Like I think it's in a, a fleshed out spot now to at least parallel with Chambers and Tob, which is good. Up. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Dude, Rice Cup, you got any uh, raids free specific questions for our man here? I mean, we 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 cover pretty much most most of kind of like the the stuff. I mean, we could talk about like the the uh the caress, you know, add-ons and stuff. Like it seems like it's going to be a weapon very catered towards the raids 3 itself. And you know, cuz there's only one relevant kill fight boss outside of race three and that's clean right but she's pretty minor content yeah but like they're giving three different orbs to this thing so i'm I'm assuming it's going to be like very heavily used directly at the content yeah that, that it comes from dude something and it's only the it's only the cal fight gem that even works outside of raids so definitely is yeah. like for the raid yeah, yeah. It's one of those recyclable like drops that you you be used at the same place. But they they tend to do yeah. that quite a lot nowadays, but it does work cuz it keeps the prices very high cuz you're, you know, even if you get more, your your people still need it to to do the content again. So it's it's like an extra layer of uh stability, I guess. Yeah. Also, also yeah, we just don't I mean like like obviously we're going to eventually figure out the metas for like what to bring. Um, but mm -hmm. I would hope that, well, see, the problem is I just know that, like, because of Rune Light and, like, the way they can gather all the data and stuff, you know, and figure out the implications being, which one's being more efficient for loot, it's, it's probably inevitably going to come down to, you know, right, just knowing, knowing the meta, uh, rotation for it or whatever, but I'm just really hoping, like, there's just a lot of different styles, like, different, um, gear subs that you can do depending on, like, the, the rotations like rotations that you can set up for your handicaps you know may, maybe maybe it's so well balanced that you there's competitive variations of handicaps you know that you could 
choose from and then be- because of that you have different gear setups that you can like play with instead yeah. of like oh this is one absolute like just uh, so much better than everything else this setup you just you can't go you know, there's no other reason to do anything it's like i hope it's yeah. it's more fleshed out than that because otherwise yes it would be really i'm fun. i'm really hoping there's a bunch of like little metas right because in the raid they've mm-hmm. said there'll be four bosses before the last one and we'll be able to choose which rooms we enter. So you can do the bosses in any order, but their mechanics change apparently based on the order. So I'm hoping okay. like maybe <laughs> some invocation setups really good with this rotation, some invocation setups really good with this one. And maybe like based on skill level and what you're doing, like you're changing your invocation. I'm hoping like a bunch of different things for different skill levels. That would be great, but. Yeah. Um, I heard that the, uh effectively the the staff that they're going to be uh having as the main reward from raids free the one which is on par with the tebow and scythe is going to be two-handed right and i remember you talking about it and you were saying it's a bit strange because the first thing that comes to mind is the the upgrade for the arcane which is now going to be best in slot is kind of i don't know if i'd say devalued but it's kind of weird that you have a staff and you know the offhand that can't be combined together um and you were talking about potentially uh decreasing the damage or how the staff worked and making it one-handed so then it could be used with it i yeah i'm torn on that like the saying is still going to be really good and it'll be buffed by the the ward so it's still going to be good right yeah, yeah. the try and get the buff dude i'm not spamming that that staff everywhere you know <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The new <laughs> it also like, it also makes sense my, my soul rooms. <laughs> yeah it also makes sense just like if you want it to be like similar to a tebow or scythe like making it a big nasty two-handed thing that's kind of slow it that makes sense to me as well just like thematically yeah. but yeah, yeah i think i think that was one of the things that kind of like kicked into my mind after i heard you speaking about that i was like okay i can see where you're coming from with like the offhand but at the same time the staff that comes to mind for me, and I know it's completely unrelated, I think of the mm-hmm. um, the staff of Armadil, where you used to cast the Storm of Armadil. It was like a pre-OC thing. Busted mm-hmm. in PvP. Bleh, putrid. Terrible thing. Mm-hmm. But but it made me think mm-hmm. of that, because I was like, that was a really powerful staff. Uh, it was two-handed, but it destroyed. Right? Like, that. you did not want to get caught up against that thing. I, and I remember people used to, like, they used to kill Armadil with that staff, like, killing it with Mage, which had been, like, never really done before that staff entered into the game. So so I guess my next question is, I, I know that you know more about this than I do, when it, when it comes to that staff that they're talking about, and I don't know if it's a staff or a scepter, um, mm-hmm. how is that going to change the way that PVMers do PVM in the future? Like, you were talking about there's a bunch of bosses where it's going to be better to use over the Tebow and Scythe, so where exactly is that staff going to be best utilized, and what metas are going to change because of it? Well, let's say how it works first, right? It's really simple. It's just triple the effect of whatever gear you're wearing. So it's triple accuracy, triple damage of whatever gear you're wearing. So it's tripling Ancestral. So what's cool about it is that now, things like a Sears ring those matter a lot more because it's triple, right? So because it's got insane accuracy, you can actually punch through like some defense. So it's funny that you were saying Armadale because it's going to be best. It's going to be best in slot at Armadale. Um, What's really interesting about it though is since you have to wear like this really... Usually magic in PVM, you bring like a smaller switch. It doesn't matter so much like how how many gear pieces you're bringing. But with this new staff, you're going to want like full eight ways, like at minimum. Plus, when you're in, like, Ancestral, you're wearing paper. Like, literally paper. Like, you have no defense. So, yeah, it's going to be better at, like, Armadil. But we're going to have to come up with some unique way to use it because we're just going to get shredded. Oh, dude, this sounds so, awesome, man. Like, the, the first yeah. thing that comes to mind, I'm like, okay, well, you don't want to use Ancestral. Maybe opt for the tankier mage armor. Go for, like, our rims or something like that. Not Still yeah. not the best, but, you know, I, I've never actually looked at the defenses of one as- Ancestral. Is it is it, like, similar to Mystic? Or is it a little tankier? I wrote anyway? this paper. Compared yeah, to wearing Armadil, I put it with 60% worse, was, like, my rough calculation. So it's, like... A lot worse. <laughs> so, so it's basically like ghostly robes, men. If you're following, along. yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, I know what mystic defense robes are. All right, bro. Mm-hmm. Dude, that's. Yeah. I really like that. I, I think that that weapon itself, like 
does some interesting stuff. So I, I'm guessing you could use that staff quite easily to go and kill Zora, and you just mage every single phase. Um, would you be able to brute force like the mage phase on Zora? It would be worse than a Tebow, if I remember, but it's like disgusting on the other phases. So I'm sure you could mage camp with it. Yeah, Probably better than Tebow camp. Yeah, just, I mean, it's just like, you know, stronger than what you had before for magic. <laughs> Pretty much, uh, yeah. So, right. So I'm really sorry for any, I know there's always one person in the podcast, which is like, oh my God, you guys should totally read the updates before, whatever. Dude, what I does this, all the updates, dude, bro. Mitch, shut you your ass up, bro. You don't do none of that. I, I'm gonna be honest. I haven't read the like what the staff does exactly. I haven't read the recent one. So does it work effectively like a, a trident sang staff, or does it have a like yeah. spell that you can? Okay, where it's like a trident, for example. Um, yeah, it's a powered staff. Mm -hmm. It's a powered staff. Okay. Uh, do we know like what tick rate it attacks at? What its max hit is and so forth. Yeah. So it's five tick. So your normal staff, like a trident or a sang, is four tick. So it's a little slower, and it's a okay. big, clunky, nasty two-handed staff. So it's like slow, hits like a truck. I mm -hmm. It maxes in the 70s or something with Max Mage on. It's like disgusting. It's like a Tebow. That's fucking awesome, man. So just womp 70s? Like, womp. Yeah. Womp. Oh my god. Dude, imagine... Okay. Oh, right. So, I listen, Min, I know you're over there with the fairies checking out AFTs right now, but like... They, they need to check that, you, dude. You know, bro. Because that's I can see it in the reflection of your glasses, man. I can see no, you. you hey. Stop <laughs> reading can, me like a book. Stop it. I can just see the bank value going down and into the red. <laughs> I, I failed a bid actually. That's what I was doing. I was trying to bid Mate. on something. I failed it, man. Hurt. Right to tie this into to to, to PVP real quick. Uh, because I want oh, yeah. you in this fucking conversation, man. Because <laughs> my boy Rice Cup ain't feeling too well, man. He can't talk too much now. You need to help me, man. He's just, he's just brooding down there. Look at him. Scary looking ass. Look at that guy. Dude, we, we said before the podcast, by the way, that this is this is Rice Cup's alter ego. This is how Rice Cup walks around in game. Summed up in this picture, that this man literally his cock dr like drags behind him like ten feet. <laughs> Like damn, Rice! I know you had a tail. Oh shit! Nah, that's just because I'm not six foot. You know, like some of y'all. <laughs> oh, dude, no, seriously. If you logged into the game for the first time and you saw Rice Cuff's account, you'd be like, "Jesus Christ, bro!" <laughs> and you looked up his stats and you saw he's an Iron Man. You're like, "This man smells like onions, but he's a god, bro!" Like, my lord, look at him. For sure, absolute god. I just got lucky, dude. I mean, just like oh my 10, god! Thousand hours of life, bro. <laughs> dude. All us, baby. I wonder what they're two things. So to tie this into PvP, I wonder if they're going to have some kind of cap on this staff, because if this thing's, oh, I wonder if he's even should be allowed in they don't PvP. Even let you. They don't yeah, even let you know. use in PvP. Uh, what no, if they already allowed. say? Okay, okay. Yeah, it's not allowed. Oh, you just because it's it. it's the same thing as tried it. You know. Because, okay. like, think about it, you just one-click someone with that thing. You can't melee with it? You can't... I don't think so. I mean, it would be pointless if you melee with it. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's true, bro. The guy would be like, whoa, that's like a two-bill loot. I'm going to kill this guy right now. You just beat someone with a two-bill stick? Now, that's a video right there. Oh, man, yeah. I watched that. It's just bitter, like, bitter. dude, it's yeah, literally a, it. it's a Gandalf staff. Like, that's what I imagine. Yeah. I imagine, like, this seen... super powerful staff is cool. I've not seen it. Is there, does it look like Gandalf's actual dude, staff? We don't even... Like a Draymond staff? There's no design. That's what it looks like? Yeah, uh, there's no model for it yet. Can you imagine it comes out? It looks just like the magic battle staff with no element, but without, like, the top. Just <laughs> Man. What if it's just, like, a Fortnite pickaxe? Yeah. <laughs> dude, I would actually be very down for it to be some kind of like not basic staff but based upon one of the basic staves right where it's almost been like it's like a basic staff but it's like buff Wait, it's gonna be twice as big as the normal staff 100 percent. What, what do you guys think about the ability to skill with it bro like you just sit there and you like conjure up an axe and you're just fucking up a tree like twice as fast but it costs like a lot of runes runescape 3 <laughs> oh is that already a thing in runescape 3 bro yeah fuck See, this is yeah. There's, there's like skin overrides that you can like yeah, like, you you like cast an, I remember one is like you cast an energy beam like Goku and like the resource is great. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's, yeah, that's yeah, exactly yeah. what I was thinking, bro. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm just picturing I'm going into Varak. I check out the U trees and there's just like 20 bots just nuking it like this. <laughs> just, 
and the trees melt and you could see it. Oh my god. I mean, if we're gonna have bots, at least make them look pretty, right? Like, you know, yeah. I, I've just had an epiphany, man. I, you know, we always, well, Mint always says, Mod Minty, I want to become a J Mod. Get me over there. I'm gonna fix the wilderness and all this. Mm -hmm. I think you would make a good J Mod, Mint, but I think it wouldn't be for the old school RuneScape team. Okay. I think it'd be for RuneScape free. <laughs> I think that your ideas would they would do well over there, man. If I was hired. For RuneScape 3 JMod, and they gave me full control. TV. I would go. Oh, dude. It would be like an item purge you've never seen. Everything would burn. Like three weeks in, you just have, like, you can combine shit, just taking items out of the game. Just complete burn of all that other shit. I decrease all the item drops on monsters. Uh, and then I'd add, instead of that 25% risk or whatever, if you died, 100%, lose it all, make it hard, dude. I, I'd, I'd bring it up, bro. I could, I could fix RuneScape 3. Okay. I'm gonna we... get the LE price up, the DFS up, the whip up. Dude, just watch. Just watch. Fly me on over. Dude, do you know what we've not asked you? And I'm kind of ashamed to say it, but like you're a RuneScape free player originally that's came over to old school. Um how how would you compare the two? Are they comparable? They're so different. I mean, it's got the same base, like there's bruise in that game you know like there's basic the items are the same mm. but the the combat the combat isn't even recognizable it's like a completely different system that mm. graphically i think old school like people like the graphics in runescape 3 as well i think old school kind of i like its simplicity it's a lot nice there's some things that are just plum ugly in runescape 3 they look so bad I think it's just because it's easier on your brain. You just look at yeah. something, you go, know, I know what that is. I could probably even smell, you know. I bet it, I know what we it smells. We fill in the like, You look at RuneScape 3, you're like, I can't, I'm not sure what I'm looking at in half this picture, right? It just doesn't really compute that well. Okay. <laughs> you don't like that? You don't like that, dude? I, I'm I'll tell never, you, there's some. Have you I'm, heard of the what's it called a simplest or something where they just live with the bare essentials what is that minimalist or whatever minimalist yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> that's the mmo that's like runescape both like incredible mechanics dude but our graphics are so minimalist that when you see something you just it insta yep. flicks on you like that's a big yep. axe i bet it hits hard yup <laughs> you know just stuff like that runescape 3 Honestly, I, I logged in once. I wasn't even sure where I was. And it said Lumbridge. I was looking around like, I don't see no castle. I don't. I see a vendor. The fact, why are there like so many vendors on the side of the street, dude? What are these things? I was so lost. Yeah, our yeah. street's a little too... It's like, another, it's like, it's more, it's closer to traditional MMOs where there's too much shit yeah. <laughs> everywhere. Yeah. I think, um, people like I think the thing I couldn't relate to, Mint, was when you said you could smell stuff. That for me, you lost me at that point, but... <laughs> I, I, you know, to each their own. I don't, I don't go around licking trees, man. So I don't know what your your brain. Like. Well, try it, bro. It's good for your tongue. It, it's like <laughs> it's Stingling. like you can really process it so well that you'd be like, I bet it smells like this. You know? No, okay. I don't know. What I'm talking about. Let's skip over. It. <laughs> no, but I, I, I know, I know what don't you're saying, dude. There's there's right. there's a certain a level of charm that comes with RuneScape as well. It's yeah. like you know, you look at it and it's charming. It's like, oh, dude. That there's something about that art style. It's the same with like, I mean, you could argue it is pixel art because it is, right? It's like you know, Pokemon, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's just an art form, and it's some people enjoy it more than others, and you know, some people don't. It is what it is. Like for me I mean, personally, Tom, when you, sorry, I'll you give go. you a little ultimatum here, dude. Tom, when you look at the newest video game, I don't know, or Pokemon, what was it called? Like Violet. There's another one coming out. It's like Sword and Shield, and there's like Crimson. All right, and then you look at Pokemon Yellow, dude. What makes you happier to look at just instantly, right? Oh, Pokemon oh, Yellow. That's so biased, though, dude. It's biased, <laughs> but that's the charm, bro. We grew up in that charming era of video games, and now this charm, we call it nostalgia, forever lives in our brain, and every time we see something incredibly simple, it's just like, okay, I could play this, you know? I could sit here and chop this tree all day, bro. I don't give a fuck. Our brain yeah, just I'm always going like to tell that. these new kids that, like, they're playing the 10th version of Pokemon Yellow, all right? Not the original. <laughs> well, I, do you know, it's really, it's an interesting topic, though, because, like, you know, we've stuck with old school RuneScape and its graphics throughout time. And I, I feel like we probably do have a bias when it comes to other video games where I, I think, I'll speak for myself, I 
I'm very like drawn towards games that aren't heavily focused on the graphics, okay? Because from my personal experience <laughs> through playing games like Old School RuneScape, I'm like, okay, this game has proven to me that a game doesn't have to look good in order to have depth and just be a you good know, game. You know, another way to look at it is, okay, so this game is not a heavily marketed game, right? And whereas a lot of people get into gaming, a lot of them like to hear what's new, right? What's what's trending. So a lot of people like to play based on what the market is telling them to, right? And we don't we don't give two shits about that because we're so conditioned to just think a bit more independently from you know the, what the marketers want want us to play or you know commercials and stuff. We're just we're just playing this because we like it and not because yeah. Like, yeah, man. Do you know what? Some, like some company told us we should play it. Dude, as soon as I speak to any of my, I love them the bits, but my normie friends that are casual gamers, whenever they're introducing me to one of their new games that they've bought on Xbox or PlayStation, the first thing they always say is, bro, you got to see the graphics. And I'm not going to lie, I'm so disconnected from that. I'm just like, oh, yeah, they're really, really nice graphics. And then you've just got like a cow that's like floating in the air to the side. It's like, good game. Yeah. Now I feel that, man. For me, when I when I see a game, if it's incredibly easy to comprehend, it almost makes me feel like I have more power, right? I swear ever since I got out of Pokemon when I was younger and I realized I could shit on people online and video games, all I looked for was like the most simple games with the most unique mechanics. Graphics didn't matter. That's probably how I found old school. Cause it's like you can manipulate your surroundings more. If you're thrown into a game with deep depth of graphics you know like call of duty or whatever you could be incredibly skillful at it but like it it doesn't feel like you have full control in my opinion i don't know when when simplicity hits a game right you, there's something nice about master and, and, yo and plus it's not even about graphics it's it's about aesthetics you know right yeah because like because like a good graphics doesn't mean like it's realistic your graphics can mean that um aesthetically looks good so yeah. it's already like like you know it's just if people got into the gaming through this idea that like you you like to play whatever is more realistic then they they're playing a complete they're just enjoying gaming in a completely different way yeah and they probably would actually enjoy games that are you know definitely not realistic you know like like RuneScape or something if they actually if they actually try to you know interact with the game right rather than just looking at the game and, and assuming it's a good game. So yeah, it's just different. I, I mean, I don't want to. It's you know, what I mean, like, I don't want to sound like we're superior because like we we see through that. But you know, a lot of people just kind of like we play games the game like it's a movie. Yeah, we know? we play games differently, man. Like most of my friends have played RuneScape <laughs> when they were younger, um, but they they're all they've all got the same story of like, oh, I died to the goblin or I died to the cow, and then I logged out and never I played don't think again. You died to a goblin, bro. I don't. I, don't know, you know, I, I died to level five friend, goblin. Get new friends, bro. Nah, I, nah, nah dude. I, Dude, th it's, this is this is the friend. thing, man. It's like there are certain games. Uh, I speak for myself. Like RuneScape captured my imagination, bro. Like it was like I could have died a million times to cows. It did not fucking matter, bro. I was How gonna many keep times? going. I didn't How die many? to a cow, dude. More than ten. Right. Jesus, bro. What? I swear to God, when I was walking past the cow pen, I, that was you fuckers I was looking at, the ones that were falling down. Bro. There's Rake there's, there's his buddies, dude. Rice is down at the goblin fields dropping. My God, bro. At least Man. make it to the wizards. But you oh, know, there ten times. You know, it's like at least when you play a game that hasn't got triple A graphics, at least you know the like at first glance there's an advantage to it. You know bro, that they've spent barely. They've spent barely yeah. any time focused on how it looks. So it's like, okay, well, if they if they don't care so much about how it looks, maybe they've spent their time wisely and they thought, we want this game to play well. And it's like, okay, well, let's check yeah. it out, you know? That's definitely, like, an advantage to having a game that doesn't have the best graphics. Is, is that, like, okay, what's the selling point? It doesn't look good. So maybe the actual gameplay itself is the thing that's good. Because uh, I think I think, I choose I think a game... Time. I think the game should look good, but it doesn't have to look realistic. You know, I think that's a the clear distinction, right? Like, I think all good games look good because, like, the way that it's graphically made makes sense with like the overall game, right? Like RuneScape, the graphics make sense 
with the overall game, you know? Yeah. And like and like I feel like a lot of new games that are more like AAA games, they just try to like, you know, they just trying to pump out money like, you know, like the yeah. yearly cash flow. They're like, "All right, all right. We have to make sure the graphics look realistic." Use well, dude, newest yeah, yeah. generation graphics, you know, every bro, time. Bro, bro. And I think trying... that, that misses the point completely because the goal is, all right, let's make a game that's fun for people. Bro, you know? they're, they're and, literally... And matches. The way know? I view it right. is they're they're out at sea yeah. and they're throwing a fucking net straight across. And they're trying to hit... They're trying to hit that big fucking, like, just talking thousands of fish. And guess what? They're the normies. They're trying to get the biggest yeah, group of, their, of people. It's just a tradition for them to just be Did like, you... yo, new graphics, new graphics, every time. You know, every Dude, whenever, time. whenever I see a game advertised and, like, one of the key things is this graphics, I'm instantly like, yep, it's, it's a scam. Like, it's not, yeah, you it's know. Probably, it's probably not actually a funny <laughs> Yeah, Tom, Tom, did you hit a squid with that fucking net, bro? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, bro. <laughs> fucking hit but, the well, bro. <laughs> something, but um, but yeah, honestly, I, I look at games, and there's two experiences. It's like, do I want a movie cinematic experience where I'm kind of like a Netflix series? I'm gonna binge like The Last of Us or some of these single player game modes, and fuck yeah, I want graphics, dude. Or do I want something I can master and shit on people so I can feed my ego, like RuneScape? Yeah, I don't really care about graphics. I just want to see some people fall on the floor, and that's where I enjoy the most. Yo, of my honestly, time. And who, yo, who's to say Ruski graphics are objectively bad? You know, at the end of the day, it's just how much people like influence you to think that, right? Like, if the marketers say, "Hey, it's all about realism, etc.," and you believe that, then that's how you look at it. Whereas for us, it's like it's got to be aesthetically matching the game, and to us, that's better graphics. You know, right? It's like yeah. I'm not watching an anime because it's realistic. You know. <laughs> Right, like yeah. no, because it looks good, right, in a different way. So that's yeah. something we haven't asked. No, do you watch anime? That's the real shit right here. Oh, are, are uh, we past? I'm like, not a uh, weeb, but you know. We past, oh, like, right, sorry, bro. Yeah, we past it. Are we past it? Oh man, we can go to the Twilight section of the the podcast. You know. Yes. Yeah, we're, no, we're, watch, we're basically yeah, Twilight, no. dude. Right. So, <laughs> I, what what anime is your favorite? No, you got a faith. Oh. Favorites. Uh, how about make it easier? Favorites. Just like some of your favorites. Um, it's not really an anime, but the manga for Berserk is amazing. Oh, like I got into. Oh, no, nah, you're Love you're a full time weeb then. You're it's official. Should I get weeb? back into nah. it? You're too weeb now. Yeah, that is kind of weeby. Honestly, it's I think the only right. manga I've ever read. Does that help, bro? That's not that's not nah. kind of weeby. That's like you that's... have reached peak weeb without trying. That's basically. Nah. You could read a couple uh-huh. chapters of Naruto and you wouldn't be a weeb, but you read any amount of Berserk, you're a weeb. Yeah. I'm sorry. Bro, yeah. I, I, no, I, Berserk yeah. is basically for like the deepest souls, you know, of 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 uh, you know, the like darkest this medium. Bro, yeah, yeah. Berserk the dark is souls of manga. Nah, I mean that's basically but, Berserk, dude. But Berserk <laughs> is effectively like the RuneScape of manga. Okay, it, it's like <laughs> it's so well done. <laughs> It's a masterpiece. <laughs> it has a cool following. Everything you watch after Berserk is just not going to be the same. Like it's not it going to really ever. Bro. It's never going to mm-hmm. hit the same heights, bro. The story. So I should watch it. Oh, uh, dude, I don't know, man. I feel like I recommend Mint's watching the, kind of... the original '90s and then and then read it if you want. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't know. Though. I think just... got my taste, bro. It's not I... my taste, dude. Man, no, I, kinda... I think you like it. You man, like I think it. that I you're the kind of person that sees the adverts for the new AAA game. And you get sold on the good graphics, bro. I'm just gonna be honest, <laughs> bro. <laughs> I do oh, like graphics. I won't lie. Man. I'm yeah, sorry. Some of those single player games are pretty fire. <laughs> but gameplay is more important. No, was, it's amazing. I was reading Berserk, and I got to the chapter with the horse. I think you guys all know. Yeah, about yeah, the, the, with the, yeah, horse? the horse rape. Mm. Yeah. Yep. Oh yeah, so that was a rape. I wasn't like seeing stuff. That was well, it was attempted. It was attempted. <laughs> Right. Attempted. We got a front shot of the horse like this, and like his feet, <laughs> and, then he, and then like a fucking he, sword, and bro. Cut up. Yeah, and then he gets cut yeah. up. Man by, was by, wielding by, that by... shit, dude. And I stopped yeah. reading sadly after that. So should I get back on the horse? Oh hell yeah, because okay. it's not really about that stuff, you know. That's it's just it's just really showing the gravity of kind of like their world, you know. It's just that fucked up, man. There's like, you know, <laughs> that fucked up, dude. Do you know, don't don't know the... I was in an airport, bro. <laughs> Bro, I literally I was like, like, oh shit, an airport? Oh, no. no. What can I, I say, a... you know? 
throwing peeks over my shoulder. I'm fucked. Honestly, yeah. I already got. Is that like My Little on. Ponies? Like, yeah, it's My Little Ponies. Dude, I kind of look like someone who'd like I, My Little Ponies. Honestly, they would they would throw me in jail. They see me looking at that shit in the airport, man. Nah, dude, you're good. You're good. Dude, you know what's nah, funny? I'm I went for a walk earlier, like a pretty lengthy walk. It's a couple miles, and um, when I was like coming towards the end of the walk, and like I was in the endorphin stage, and I was feeling really good. Berserk actually popped into my mind, and I was I, like, "That's how good this anime is." I started to think about guts, and I was like, "Man, this guy had such a fucked up childhood, and like so much nasty stuff happened to him." I'm like, "It's amazing that he didn't turn out bad," and for some reason, I'm just on this walk IRL, and I'm just thinking about all of this stuff that happened to him. That's how good that anime is. Like, it makes you think about it when you're thinking clearly from, like, an endorphin rush. Like, it's on a different level. It really is. Mm -hmm. Yo, you gotta read the manga, bro. You gotta read the manga. Oh, dude. I highly recommend it. It's so, so good. I highly Can't recommend it enough. I've read it. makes I've the read top of most, like, manga sites. Like, it's the number one rated, like, across the board, pretty much. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I got into it, like, in high school way back now. But like, mm -hmm. I was a little too young. I feel I feel like even high school me was like not quite, not quite ready for yeah. it. But like, it really was astounding though. You know, I knew I knew I was reading some 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 crazy shit that like would transcend my way of thinking for for a hot minute. And it how did, how it, did really it change did. you, bro? How did it change, bro? You? It just made me realize like, yo, I can't complain about a whole lot. Like in terms of were you how more I see or less wary of horses? <clears throat> no, nah, I wasn't concerned about horses because like, okay, there's like no horses right. here, bro. It just like humbled me, bro, because I'm just like, fuck, man, this like I'm living pretty good. All right. I'm just going to try my hardest, bro. You know, I'm just going to try to be happy, man. Cause this is, cause, so like, this, Berserk is based on like some peasant medieval. No, it's, probably... it's based on itself, <laughs> you know, really. oh, so it's not like set in a time where everyone was just kind of having a horrible, horrible. It's day. like it's 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 like hot. It's like dark fantasy. It's like, like medieval fantasy, fantasy, man. Medieval fantasy is a lot of that medieval fantasy stems from reality. Remember, like the oh dark yeah, of course it, it, yeah. it must be inspired from a bit of religious context, stuff like that. But I'm saying it's like it's so original at the time, you know. It's mm. inspired loads, of, like it's the original like big sword anime. <laughs> like anything yeah. that has a big sword that came from that. Yeah, right, I guess I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna watch it right now, dude. All right. Yeah, just watch the 1990s version or the three movies. It's okay. Those, okay. Yeah. I was gonna send me the country roll real quick. And watch the new, the new one. Show, though. Yeah, that, that was terrible. Yeah, I watched the new one. No. No, the no, new no, one's no, trash. No. Either watch the three movies, the Golden Age movies, or you watch the 1990s Berserk. Watch the nine. Okay. Watch the earliest one. Watch the series. That one's, in my opinion, best. But yeah, I, I actually yeah. watched all of it. Including like the newer stuff that's bad, oh, fuck, no, no, and it, no, it is bad, know. dude. It's yeah. I, I tried I was... to. I love it so much. I couldn't. You need to read the manga, dog. <laughs> yeah, here, here, I, here, I know. I'll give you the link. I'll give you the link. Bro, so hook me like... up. I actually did start. I did start to uh, to read the manga, but we'll I like watch the 2016, 17, please. Yeah, hey, don't you? do it. Hey, Mint Man, listen. Yo, twenty seventeen stuff. It's better graphics. Okay, I'm, like this is the best comparison I can make, bro. The graphics yeah. in the 2017 is ten times better than like the 1992 one, bro. Like mm. ten times, man. I'm telling you. No. I only come have a long one way. question. Which one has more horses? The second. Hmm. I'll probably watch the first one. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Dude, oh, do you know, dude. We, we've not even asked you, Gnome. What game do you prefer, Old Score or RuneScape Free? Oh, Old School. No question. No question. Oh, wow. I feel like a lot of people feel that way, but they still play RS3 just because... Bro, I love RS3 Iron Man, man. man. I wish there was like 50 hours in a day, dude. Because I, I work on I'd be down Iron to man. go like try an Iron Man at some point, but... Dude, RS3 Iron Man is, is what got me into Iron Man in the first place. So I love, I love, I love RS3 Iron Man. It's so fucking fun. Because, like, I hate... Here's the thing I don't like about playing RuneScape 3 anymore. You know, it's just... I don't like seeing the squeal shit pop up or, like, the new version, right? I don't like it when random, like, XP stuff just pops on my inventory. I don't like this, you know? I just like to... There's literally pop-ups. Shit like, out the wazoo. Exactly. But, but when I log into the r I'm in, no pop-ups. Thank God. I just play the game. I just grind. I get stuff done. It, it's nice. You know, I love it. And then you get to enjoy the content, like, you know, without any of that uh, clutter on your face. So it's really nice. So, so I think R three is I, I, as fun as old school RuneScape. It's just that I can't fucking 
like confidently make videos on a whim on our street though obviously you know so yeah, yeah I'll, I'll just be up front you know and center uh, have you ever it. tried to make like to, hmm? have you ever tried <laughs> to make like a friend videos because he's doing well people i like yeah the way he makes i mean vids, yeah is enjoyable yeah. it's straight to the point forward you see some loot you test out some new content yeah like i i would love to work on some r street iron man stuff one day again like a new series but like yeah i, I just i just have too much commitments right now so and i feel yeah. like it'd be good to grow my brand a bit more so people can trust my ass you know if i if i go astray you know they'll be like yo you straight from the right path or whatever you know i'll just be like yeah i'll show you this new path and it's gonna be good stuff, you know what i mean i, right, I need so to you, build um... out that branding you make a lot of Iron Man content. Have you ever made like loot videos just specifically Yo, that's, tailored? That, that's when stuff? I started. Uh, yeah, like I made I made some when I started the channel. Have you ever thought it about a thought about going back and and kind of like I don't know. For me, yeah, I don't watch a lot of Iron Man that. progress, but I could watch like a Mister No Sleep grind out some revs. Or, I mean, like just, nah, because I can just like always that. incorporate into a progress video. I'll just put that to start of the video, and then you and then you watch it, and you can exit out. That's yeah. true. Yeah, I don't. There's I don't bother making new videos about. anymore. Like, like I want to yeah. make some guides in my free time, boss guides. Oh, nice. like a smithing guide? No, no, oh, no. no okay. I feel like that stuff is just not in, important enough to make a single video. <laughs> in my opinion, I wouldn't bother with that. But I need to learn how to train smithing, Rice. Come on. Yeah, People well, are asking me to make that too. I'm like, yeah. you guys no, can do dude, a duo like, collab, bro. Right? Just you freaking to, yeah. run one part, bro. you get the other, right? right no, just put on Goldsmith gauntlets and run some gold ore at the blast furnace, dude. Done. Yeah. Let's go. You can dude, make so, TikTok so guides, bro. Cool. You make seven second guides. Go do, uh, what'd you say? What was that? I forgot the methods already. You said buy oh, gold man. ore. Go buy gold ore, dumbass. Click, boom. You got yourself a TikTok. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you think there'd be someone to watch that? I don't know. I don't need TikTok. Uh, I don't know. I have no idea how relevant TikTok is in the game. It's incredibly relevant. <laughs> uh, sadly, I wish it wasn't as relevant just because I'm not in TikTok, but it makes me think about being a TikTok. Man, you know. I, I heard uh, some crazy thing the other day regarding TikTok. Apparently, I think it was KSI, right? The UK um, boxer, rapper, FIFA player, he's done everything. He said that he had like 100 million views on TikTok. 100 million views. Guess how much money he made from 100 million well, nah, views on TikTok. How much I'd imagine? Like, just, just throw one out there. A million Five dollars. Grand? How much? A million dollars. How much did you Five say, man? Grand? What do you think, Gnome? We'll go three million, dude. He, he <laughs> apparently he made like three thousand from a hundred oh. million views on TikTok because yeah, because it's it? so short. How do you yeah. like advertise it? How do you monetize so, it? Where's the ads? Like <laughs> just, that's yeah. the thing, though. It's like it's TikTok so in itself as a platform is growing rapidly, and right now I believe they're going to implement something to where they're going to get fifty percent membership or ad ad subscription fees to like ten percent, so their their revenue is going up. It's like a whole plan they have that just slowly take over the social media platform. And I honestly, I think in five years time, TikTok is going to be something completely different than we see. I now. guess. Yeah. I mean, it's good. Yeah. Maybe mess with YouTube shorts. I don't know. So I don't know. I, I, I haven't been doing it. I want to do it. It makes me want to learn it. And I don't want to feel like learning right now. But I heard what yeah. where the money is for TikTok isn't views. It's more like advertisements. Oh, and then sure. you're, you're fine. You know, it's like Gillette, same, yeah, no money. Yeah, if Gillette gets a hold of you or, or you know, some big company, you're, you're set. You just make those videos. Yeah, it's more about exposure, I guess. <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's honest exposure. And then I think over time, they're going to be adding more incentives. So whoever is a giant is going to be a colossal yeah. giant soon. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, mean I, I feel like for RuneScape, it's mainly just YouTube and Twitch right now. So Yeah, you'd be surprised. But if you want to expand I mean, your... Yo, I mean, if I become an anime YouTuber, I can fucking TikTok. I feel like that would work well. Well, you yeah. know what you could do is just those loot videos in like shorter spans. Like if you ever do one for a progress video, just take that part and make that a TikTok. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, People well, love I, that shit. People love watching the big boy banks, dude. Right? They yeah. Love it. It's short. Yeah, that big boy bank, dude. Click Bro, just on yeah, just back. use that female voice. I killed a thousand Kelfi queens. Here's the loot, and then dude, it's like be like Parky <laughs> Meter. Go find a girl off the of Fiverr. Have her in your video. I love you, Meter. Brilliant idea, brother. You're gonna be set. Or Rakesy has a you know get some makeup on that man, dude. Shave the well, shave the beard. 
Bro, I'll tell you this right now, man. Shorts would probably be really good for yourself because you can make, like, <coughs> PKs. Like, literally, you find somebody, spec them out, and then open up their key. Boom. Easy. Like, your content is actually, like, perfectly designed for shorts. Like, you could do it I so easily. I don't know do I'm not sure how. I heard you gotta, like, do it in, like, a mobile format. That's the part that I just... Oh, I don't know. I haven't done... I have no uh, idea. Man. That's gross. I, I can't so, record that. I can't record it like that, dude. Dude, it's like, do you know, what? it's like, it's like my guilty, it's like my guilty trait that sometimes at night I do go for YouTube shorts. Uh, I, I'm going to let you guys in on a secret. I ain't going to lie. My Instagram, I've literally been on um, YouTube shorts and I've done Instagram shorts. Instagram videos are like 10 times 10 times better than YouTube. I don't know what it is. Like, the only good ones I get on YouTube are, like, Warhammer 40k ones that are fucking awesome, because if you guys don't know what Warhammer 40k is, that world and, like, lore and shit is fucking incredible. Um, but yeah, like, Instagram's, like, sick, man. It'd be, like, people, like, like, I don't know, it'd be, like, some fucking shark that starts biting on a boat or something. And it's just a guilty pleasure of mine. I just sit there for, like, an hour, and I'm just, like, scrolling through these, like, 10, 20 second videos, and then I look up and I'm like red eyed. I'm like, I need to get a fucking life, man. Like it gets you. It gets you. It. I hate it, that's bro. That's why. Like I'm really. Yeah, I'm that's why disappointed I think in myself. Be it, bro. Well, no, we I just I got think... that seven second span. That's our seven seconds, and if we don't like it, we move on. But if it's only seven seconds, it don't matter, dude. Right? But like, I just, it's, I, I, they're unlocking it's, our mental. Dude, it's much. interesting because there's certainly a part of that in everybody, I think. But at the same time. I much prefer long format videos. Like, dude, like, we have a podcast. If we like TikToks and shit, what are we doing making a fucking podcast that's like, like an hour and a half, two hours long? I enjoy watching podcasts. And even if there's dull moments, I'm just like, I'm still going to watch it because the conversation is something I'm interested in. And I could listen to this for hours. You know? I, um... Nah, I was going to say the reason why I like podcasts, but it's not like a semi-political, and that's just not... <clears throat> No, I get into it. But, huh. Okay, right. I, yeah, <laughs> leave but, it there. Leave it there, yeah. bro. Let's leave um, that there. Oh, but TikToks, like, man, are gonna be big, though. Dude, I think so. They just I, mastered it. They mastered the format. I mean, yeah, they're onto something. I'm so disappointed in myself for enjoying those things, but then I'm just like. Some of those videos are good, man. Some of them are absolute trash, bro. When, when it's some stupid, like, just fucking Kim Kardashian bullshit, I'm just like, get away from me, man. Like, what is that? I want to watch something about, like, a fucking leopard. Or, like, there's a lion that's, like, hunting. That stuff's cool. And then you get these terrible videos of, like, some, ch like, car wash. I don't know. I'm going on a tangent. But, yeah, podcasts are cool. <laughs> Yo, no Monkey, do you believe in aliens? <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, there may be little green men that visit us at night. It's possible. Green. I fear personally. That's my uncle. <laughs> Your uncle. <laughs> yeah, not green, but he's gonna find you. My nice. sister's a flat earther, so. Wow, Wait for like, that's um... like for real, for real. I I don't know if she still is. She's kind of like we don't ask about it, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would debate the shit out of anybody I knew that's a surfer, and I just, oh, it's just such a waste of time. I don't understand. <laughs> it's like a cult, isn't it? It's oh kind of like, oh, this guy has a different point of view, and then he's like, oh, he makes some sense. I'm intrigued, and then boom, they're sold. I don't know, and they just won't listen to anything else after that. Just they turn their mind off. It's a cult. <laughs> yeah, it's like a series of straw men. I don't know, man. It's. Mm. <laughs> I kind of wish the Earth was flat, though. Like that does sound nice, That'd be doesn't sweet. it? It would be sweet. Brown said we live on something that we can barely even comprehend. So I, I see why they want to run to that reality. But Tally, yeah. what do you do? What do you think that's about, man? Like, what do you think? Um, obviously, people are different, but like when it comes to like flat Earth, I think the thing for me, the I'm like, okay, I can kind of see where that's coming from is like the oh but i can only see this far into the distance and there's no curve and it's like okay right that's whatever like but like what do you think it is like there it might be like there's like a psychological like whenever i think about it, i'm like do these people just like have trust issues like they don't like being told something without being able to like visibly see it themselves which hey you know it's like a lot of people are like that you know there's nothing wrong with that 
But like, it's an interesting thing. Like, why are people just so distrusting? I guess it's usually religious people, from what I've seen. I think so. It's just like a a control thing, and like you mean those people yeah, would be like, right. "I'm not a monkey." You're like, "What?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They just don't want to be known as a monkey. That's that just pisses them off so much. <laughs> you call me a monkey? Fuck you! It's like, mm. bro. Okay, I don't have to tell you, man. What What do you want to come from? Mini humans? I mean, what? You just created ten thousand years ago? Okay, fair enough. Fuck it. I'm down. Flat Earth. Yeah, I mean, after came that point, boat. you just kind of begin to be like, yeah, I'm, I'll whatever you say, bro. Flat Earth. You know, fucking 10,000 years, sure. I'm down. He just created all this shit in seven days. I like it. I enjoy it. I enjoy his aspirations. You know, you just kind of fought. Yeah, he's pretty ambitious, man. I hope to be yeah. like him one day. Honestly, <laughs> and if he exists, I'll, hey, dude, I'm down too, bro. Sometimes I'll be praying when I, when I, something, I'm like, hey, just in case, bro, send me something down here. But I mean, I don't know, dude. I'm not, I'm not religious, but at the same time, like, are we getting this conversation? <laughs> <laughs> we, I mean, I'm we listening. Just, hold the brakes. Are we getting in into this shit, bro? Yeah, let's go. I mean, if, <laughs> you, if, if you listen past the hour, you don't give All a right. shit no more. <laughs> All right, so yeah, just go off the rails. Let's go. <laughs> Not too often. I have so, incredibly <laughs> religious friends and incredibly religious family members, and I love them all, and they're all super cool. It's just hard for me to believe that uh, if there was an all ruling lord, he would he would just hand us a book, and that would be it. Be like, here you go. Read this, interpret whatever you want. Honestly, you know, if you want to collect money, cool. Bug it. <laughs> I just, I don't know, man. They don't. To me, if there was a god, it wouldn't. That's not how it'd be going down. But maybe, maybe, maybe who knows, man? Maybe he's a literature god. And he likes people to make money off. I, honestly, I have no idea. But it just doesn't sound. It just doesn't sound right. Yeah, that's fair enough, man. Yeah. I'm going to make a Reddit post on you after this podcast. Yeah, uh, <laughs> so definitely canceled, bud. Definitely. Uh, Later. <laughs> he, I don't know Jesus. He's cool. You know, kind of trying to look like him. I like that guy. The story, this, the whole Bible story is um, wild, though, dude. Right? The, yeah, it's, the a, crazy... it's a good anime, dude. Yeah, it's, it's honestly, oh, if you imagine. look at it as a book instead of a religion, you'd be like, damn, dude. Like, he talked to a burning bush. That's kind of cool. You know, or... The yeah. whole he spawned food out of less food, you know. Was it like fish and yeah? And was bread? that some full yeah. alchemist thing or what? You know, because that, that's what was good. that about, bro? Or the blood of of Jesus? I mean, that's that's kind of crazy. Can we get the right? Samson anime, please? Where he killed a thousand people with a donkey jawbone? That sounds sick. <laughs> I'd watch that. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm down, man. I need I need please. something fresh. <laughs> Yeah, I just, I, I, I find it, like, I don't know, man, I, I see it as stories, and I think that there's just more interesting stories, personally. Like, um, I don't know if any of you guys remember, there was a film made, it was many years ago, called uh, Prometheus, okay? And it was one of, like, the alien film franchises, it was, like, a <clears throat> continuation yeah, slash spin-off or something. It, and, like, I ain't gonna lie, man, like, that film was mostly not great, but... I kind of enjoyed, like, the backstory, man. It was about, like, this fucking, like, as we would see them, like, gods. It was an alien race who effectively came to Earth, and I can't remember what they called it. They called it Eden. It's called Eden, which I actually think is a really mm. nice name for Earth. It's pretty pog. Um, <laughs> and they literally, like, effectively, I guess you would say, polluted the water system with life. Like, it was like they injected life into the planet and then we came from it and i'm just like that to me is a cooler story i think that's cool and equally as credible as each other <laughs> <You know>? like, <laughs> uh, that's me done on it <laughs> oh, i mean if religion is kind of a like we're, we're trying to answer questions that we don't know right that's mainly why that's there where do we go where do we come from the biggest questions of all time and yeah. a lot of these answers that we find are intriguing. You know, even if they come from like old tales, bro, which is kind of like what the Bible is and the Moses story and the big boats, or maybe the hypothesis that maybe we were sent here from <coughs> aliens, or maybe chimpanzees ate some bush that contained some hallucinogenics and that somehow sped up the brain process. And, and all these, all these, we, we can't really prove, but we're trying to find answers, right? Maybe that's where religion came from, just us attempting to find answers in life that we just couldn't find 
So we turned. Yeah, because we were bored and we need to tell, you know, we just got to say stuff to keep us from being bored. And then we go crazier every time we try to up the story, you know? Yeah. Well, I, I personally think that, like, religion originally, I think that it was intended, like, wholeheartedly. I think there was a good reason behind it. I think it was to try and create some kind of law and order in a time that was law and orderless, right? And it was just like people were miserable, people were dying, and it's like people needed like some general rules to follow. And also, you know, to stay positive, man, like mental health isn't a thing that we've just discovered. Like even back then they might not have had a word for it, but thinking in your mind, I might die one day and go to a nice place, it's probably gonna put you in a better mood than thinking something else, you know? So I think that, you know, it was created with good intentions. Uh, my main issue is when it's pushy and when they try and contain slash um, control. like control, yeah, I guess, to a point of like what you can think. I'm not a fan of that, man. Like, I like to think wide and open. It's like I don't like these definite answers that can't be backed up. It's like I'm just not about that. I, I'm not a big fan. But I, I think mean, the intentions were um, good. Sorry, you go now? Yeah, I like that people get like a, a sense of community. That's really good. Like people coming together. And just play RuneScape. Game. Yeah, yeah, just play RuneScape. Right? <laughs> religions in RuneScape. But, uh, you know, exactly. then it opens up fanaticism as well. It's like groups of people doing stuff, you know? So it's, eh. <laughs> Two sides of the coin, you know? Yeah. You know yeah. Tom, was, Tom was bringing up some good points. <laughs> so like back in the day, Right, there was there wasn't always electricity or fridges or whatever. People, if you couldn't farm or fight, you got your ass cheeks slapped and dead. Right, and these people, they didn't know what codes to live by. They could be in random villages. I, I did hear that the Bible, the very first Bible, right? This story has been rewritten many times, and I believe even doctored fifty to hundred years ago by the Vatican. You want might want to look that up, but it might have been to serve the purpose as a handbook. I'm not the religious. First so, handbook, but... right? The first handbook, so these people kind of knew what codes to follow, <laughs> maybe add some morality to such a savage, uh, I mean, I'd imagine, lifestyle back then, right? Everything was growing and developing and people were dying. So that, that could have been how, how it went down as a, as a guide for those people. And then later on, maybe as government started to get involved and made, right, as the villages got bigger, it was used to possibly control. And that's where we kind of got the whole hell and if you were to break the law, you were bad and you must go to church and repent and then listen to the government and then pay. Right. Where did that money thing come from? Why are churches so lavish and beautiful? Why do we have to pay to be religious? Right. Maybe that's tied into the first taxes of humanity that came from religion. I, Who knows? I'm just speaking out my mind, but I could see yeah. that going down. I, I know what you're saying. I'm pretty sure, though, that um, when it comes to that mm -hmm. stuff, the government and the church were actually two separate entities, right? Not and back the, then. I, they, I, were, uh, they would connect. That's why we had those big, big wars over religion, right? Those They were, they were called right. holy wars. The crusades. Oh. The crusades. These were huge, bro. And that's because the government wanted power and religion was the ultimate power. I mean, imagine back then somebody richer and powerful is telling you, you will burn in fire. Your family's going to burn in fire. You come to church. You couldn't like go, am I really Google? Am I going to burn in fire later? Dude? You did not a fucking fact check that mm. shit. You just saw this man riding up in a golden horse, gilded plates, rich as shit. You know, he got bitches <laughs> back there. Armor, dude. He got that stank. <laughs> you know, he got yeah. all that shit, man. You're going to listen armor. to him, bro. You think this man is a source of power. And that's maybe just how humanity has led to this point. It's just, ooh, listen to him. We don't know. And then boom, now we're here. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I think that's quite interesting, to be honest. But, you know, it's like one of those things where it's like, you know, nowadays, it's like you're not forced to believe anything. Thankfully As... to America. It's Thank... kind of more of a newer thing. <laughs> okay. Kind of more of a newer thing, sadly, to say about humanity, having freedom of religion and shit. It's quite, it's quite new. Uh, Is it? Wait, no really? Like, about that. Wait, really? Yeah, there were certain areas where you could have freedom of religion, but mainly uh, you were one or the other. You were either uh, a pagan believing in false <laughs> gods or you were believing in the right God, right? That's how mainly humanity went down. A Gentile. You know? yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, just horrible, horrible people. They believe in anything that we don't believe in. Now, thankfully, I think, I'm not saying America is the number one reason. There was stuff beforehand, but definitely helped, I would say. (laughs) I don't know where we would be at this point if uh, America wasn't here. I'm not sure what, what would go down. I mean, we, man, America is an incredible social study for sure. Mm-hmm, for sure, you know, melting pot. It's it'll be interesting to see what happens in a hundred years, but we yeah. make it. Oh man! Right. Anyways, mm. boys, listen. Is there anything <laughs> else that we would like to discuss with Gnome here while we have this magnificent man? What else? Anything else? I mean, I'm kind of just chilling right now, listening. To yeah. what you guys have to say. Yeah, Tom, you're making me talk about religion and shit over here. <laughs> trying to get me canceled here in the streets. Wait, so you only watched, <laughs> you only read Berserk? I didn't start that conversation, dude. <laughs> no one stopped me. Bro, uh, I'm, I'm not going to lie. Let me, give you, guys, let me give you guys some recommendations. What you need okay. to watch. What are you looking to watch right mm-hmm. now? Let me hook you guys up. Bro, I'm, I'm re-watching The Shield Hero because oh, I, don't have, I don't have any anime to watch, bro. And have you watched Shield Cautious Hero? Hero? You uh, what, you, you know, look, what are you looking for? Serious, funny, you know, what you Right. What you want. The only animes I like are like Berserk and Attack on Time. So you like serious shit? Yeah. Basically, is what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> or do you like badass shit? Just straight up badass I, war. I like a good story. I can't watch something that is just. I can, but like something that's just like really badass. Like, I can watch it, but I want it to be deeper than that. I want there to be All character right, uh, creation. Watch, watch, watch Psychopaths. I recommend watching Psychopaths the first season. Psychopaths. Alright. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's very thought provoking, so you're gonna be like, yo you know, basically. That's all I know. Am I yeah, weird you for need like a link, I'll I, I enjoy that Shield Hero show, man. I do. Uh, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> you like it because he's the <laughs> he's the guy show. everyone hates. And then all it's of a sudden guilty the women show, like you know? him, bro. And yeah, then I'm not gonna good. spoil you, but it, it gets it gets a little better after that. Have you seen no. the cautious hero though? No, no, no. It's not serious, but it does have a pretty nice storyline that wraps around it. I told Rice to watch it. It's not his cup of tea, bro. I, well, I haven't it, seen I it. That's the thing. Yeah, I just hear it. it's an it's an isekai or whatever you call that. It spawns into a world, but it's mainly humorous. But yeah, if you watch all comedy, the episodes, yeah. it ties in. Yeah, I'll write it down, bro. It's one of my <laughs> favorites. All right, yeah, dude, I'll check it out. Yo, Gnome, do you play any other games outside of RuneScape? By the way. Um, yeah, I have a decent sized Steam library. Some random stuff. Um, no, big one Stardew? I come back to all the time is Team Fortress oh, yeah. 2. Stardew's oh. good. Oh, wow. Stardew's good. Nice, nice. There you go. Me like. <laughs> yes, agree. Me agree. Yeah, I play a, a bunch of stuff. A variety of stuff. A lot of indie games, a lot of shooters. Nice. Mm. Yeah, I, um, I recently have started playing, um, Star Wars Battlefront 2. Right? Is because that like? Recently. <laughs> Huh. Yeah, I think it's like 2017, and um, that sounds right. The game's like no longer supported by EA because basically, as far as I'm concerned, and I've been told they were taking a court about the loot boxes and stuff, and basically they're not allowed to do it. So they basically said, "Yeah, we're not having anything to do with this game. It's not making us money." That that's like what I get the gist of. So oh, it's it, yeah. unsupported. You get. Obi Wan Kenobi's and fucking General Grievous's that are just on the scoreboards, and they have like a hundred kills to the next guy, and it's like, man, like that guy's cracked, and it's like, I don't know if I'm getting cheated on, but we're talking about games with good graphics. That game's the graphics on that game are really good, and I, I've really been enjoying that game, um, and it amazes me because it's still got a lot of people that play it. It's a relatively old game now. It's like five years. It's completely unsupported by EA, so hackers, like, people are in there spamming racist stuff in the old chat and stuff. Like, it's, you have to mute all that shit. But, like, it's still a good game. People are still playing it. And, like, it's been completely dropped by EA. Like, just because they couldn't, like, milk the microtransactions is just absolutely insane. But if you like FPS's gnome, you ever heard of a game called Escape from Tarkov? Oh, God. I have. I played it a lot. <laughs> oh, my boy. Bro, I mm. love that game. They're wiping soon. You know that? I do. I haven't played this wipe, but I did the last one. Uh, okay. Yeah, I, I played I played a lot this wipe, actually. I played loads. I had to stop. I was like, 
I was playing too much. <laughs> I wasn't playing any RuneScape. I was streaming it. I was like full time Tarakon streamer <laughs> for like a month. Oh. I was like, I need to like sort my shit out, dude. I was like waking up in the morning and playing. Like I was just, I was on it 24 7. It is such a good fucking game. And the only problem I have with me playing it is that I wasn't producing content while doing so. So I'm actually in the process of setting up a second channel. <laughs> And Ooh, I'm gonna nice. play the next wipe, and I'm gonna I'm gonna play it, and I'm gonna feel good about the fact that there's YouTube coming out of it. Yeah. I will sub. I will be there. Yeah, uh. <laughs> but it's a it's an amazing game. Like it's just like for me personally, I've played a lot of MMOs. I've played a lot of different games. It is the only game that has ever came toe to toe, in my opinion, with RuneScape. For me personally, I like it that much. Like I've put this Heart thing is way up. Tarkov is a lot more similar to RuneScape than people give it credit for. Like, you have a bank, like, it's your stash. You, you get items. You basically go in the wilderness, kill people, bring their stuff back. Yeah, yeah. Pretty similar. <laughs> yeah, it literally... That's, I think that's why I like it. And I, I've said it so many times in Gnome. You're probably a good person to tell this to because, you know, you've played the game. But we talk about PvP a fair bit and how PvP hasn't got, like, any, like... Or it needs updates, it needs content, and so forth. And I'm just like, yeah. bro, take... Tarkov as a concept and just make it a mini game and have it in the wilderness. I'm like, just just do something Please. like that. Like you could do that. you there'd be a few like technical issues. So you'd have to like cover up the mini map so you can't see the dots and so forth. But like, you know, you could do a scav run on your RuneScape Tarkov minigame where you spawn in with like half Zerni and half Mystic, maybe lobsters in the inventory. <laughs> and then, do you, do you know what I mean? Like, you're running through the wilderness to another point of the wildy to escape. Like, it could be fun, which is something that would think, be really nice. I think you've got a leagues concept right there. That would be very fun. <laughs> yeah. I'd play it. Damn, that's a big title, brother. All right, listen, boys. I, I'm just going to say it. Let's wrap this one up. Gnome, mm. thank you very, very much for coming on, man. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> Uh, you know, I've been really excited for this podcast. After watching your content, I'm going to continue watching it. We're going to have all your social media, which is just YouTube, down below in the video description. Uh, so <laughs> I need Twitch as well now. So there's that. We'll right. put your, we'll put we your Twitch in there too. Links in there. Yeah. Thanks. If anybody watching wants to go check out Gnome, which I'd highly recommend, go and do so. The links are in the description. And yeah, man, thank you so much for coming on. It's been great to pick your brain about these things. Honestly, like. As soon as I watched your videos, I was like, this guy needs to come on the podcast. So thank you very much, man. <laughs> thank you so much, man. Yeah, thanks for coming on, man. That was pretty good. <laughs> Why does Rice Cup sound like that?